In this lesson, I want to show you how much water to use with watercolor. It is the most often question I get asked and that I see in Facebook groups. And also, it's the thing that I see um, frustrates my students the most. Now, often, what the problem that I see is that students do not use enough water. Uh, I think that maybe they have come from a background of acrylic painting or oil painting in which you use either no water or very little water. It takes a while to get used to using water with your watercolor. So um, what I want to do is show you first some examples. So we have uh, the answer to the question, how much water do I use with watercolor is actually it depends. It depends on the look that you're going for. So I wanted to show you some examples to show you how using various amounts of water makes a huge difference in the look of the paint. So these circles here are what you would call a flat wash. Um, as you can see there, it's just very flat, it's light. There's not a lot of movement. There is some movement in that one that had a little bit more water than is typical for flat. So, but most of these circles here are very flat. Okay, so we've got that. And these here are all flat washes. So it's a very solid, even color. Now this, you can see that there are some that are flat and some that have more water making them very um, flowy. You see some bloom starting to happen here and you see like there's this almost like this movement that you can see. Okay, so this is more like a, a nice juicy brush in here. And then these marks here are very flat. And this is a great example right here of um, these ones here are very flat. Okay, these are flat washes compared to this one here. This is a very juicy brush. It's very drippy. It's, it's full of uh, water and paint here. Okay, so you're really grabbing from a nice juicy puddle of paint. What we have here is a technique that I'm going to show you in another month's um, lesson. And um, these started off with actual puddles, like big puddles of water. So what I did was I took a, a eyedropper and I just placed puddles down. And then I just took a, a different brush here. I took a brush that was like this with uh, more of a tip. And I just infused it with um, some uh, watercolor. And then it takes a long time to dry. It can take uh, like eight hours to dry but it produces this really beautiful, like glowing result. I love this technique. The colors blend seamlessly together. It's just really, really beautiful. So I want to show you how to load your brush properly. You see, this brush is kind of gotten, it used to be white. <laughs> now it's gotten kind of green. I use a lot of greens and blues. So you see the color, it's green here. When you load your brush, you don't want to just dip the tip in it, okay? When you dip the tip, it does start to move up the bristles. Um, but uh, what I want you to do is to really get that brush down into the puddle of watercolor, roll it around, get it all the way up to the end here. Now you can see that you can see that it's got like a red color now. Okay, so it's completely saturated. So when I say to load your brush, this is what I mean. Even if you're going to go ahead and do a flat wash and you're going to take out some of the color, because what happens is when you load your brush like this, really well, it's going to last longer. There's going to be more paint to use, um, and so you won't have to dip into your color as often. So let's start with the flat wash. 
Again, this one has the most control and it produces a really flat, even color. When you get a puddle of watercolor going in your palette, get some water in there. Don't be afraid of water. Water is your best friend when it comes to watercolor. That's why it's called watercolor. Okay, you're going to add water to your color. It's not like any other medium. So you want a juicy puddle going. And if you want a very light, like if I wanted a very light green, I would add lots and lots of water here. Okay, well, let's go for this mid-tone green here. Okay, so I'm going to go for a flat wash here, a juicy wash here, and a drippy wash here. And again, that's the only technical term. Juicy and drippy are <laughs> just not technical terms. They are just what I like to call it to differentiate between them. Okay, flat wash. Once you brush off, get it nice and wet, and then we're going to take off a lot of the water here on the side of the container. We're going to pick it up on this puddle. We're going to really get it in there because we want a good amount of coverage for the color. But then we're going to take it and we're going to dab it onto our paper towel to take some of the color out. And then we can do it like that. Okay, and you see that's very flat, very even. Let's make that a little darker. We'll do another one. Okay, so I've loaded my brush up really good. Now I'm going to dab it on my paper towel. And let's go back and forth. We want looking for an even coverage of this color. Okay. That is the flat wash. If you're new to watercolor and you're trying to figure out how much water to use to get the result that you want, I encourage you to practice this. Let's practice again. Let's make it interesting and add a different color. And so there you can see I did it very light. That had a lot more water. Then I added more pigment to it and made it darker. Okay, so I got my brush loaded up again. I'm going to wipe it on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to go back and forth to get a nice, flat, even coverage. Okay. So again, I encourage you to just go straight down this column, do it over and over again, do it with different colors to make it more interesting to yourself if you want. And um, then we will move on to the juicy. So for the juicy one, I've got my color in here. And I'm going to load my brush up really well. And I'm going to just wipe it on the edge of my palette, but that's it. I'm not going to use a paper towel. And if you can see, that's way more juicy. You see there is a lot of flow in there. And now let's go to, now see I'm rinsing it out. I'm going to brush it on the edge once, and I'm going to go straight into my phthalo turquoise puddle. And I'm just going to wipe it on my palette once, and then I'm just going to go straight to this. And you can try making it a little bit more juicy by not wiping it on the edge of your palette. So I didn't wipe it on the edge of my palette, but it's still, it's not actually dripping. Okay, so, oh yeah. That's even more juicy. Let's try that with the green. I'm not going to wipe it on the edge of my palette. So you see in the juicy column, we, we still have different levels and you can go back in and, and add more water uh, watercolor to your brush and continue on. Okay. So this is your juicy um, level of water. Now for drippy, that's Got this puddle going. Okay, so I'm really going to get a lot of water in here.
Now this is the drippy. I want it very drippy. So I'm going to come back in here and add some water to it. Okay, see now that is very drippy. Okay, so you rinse your brush and don't even, you don't even have to wipe it on the edge here. Let's get some of the sable turquoise going. Okay, my brush is very wet and I'm even going to add a little bit more water by just dipping the tip of it right into the water. And so these are the three main levels of water that you will have in your brush. And there are multiple levels in between. Okay, it depends on, you know, maybe you really wipe the brush off a lot on your jar and then go into your puddle. Maybe your puddle isn't very wet. Like maybe there's just, see that's not a lot of water. Then you brush it off here. If you can see here, now it's like I'm going into the dry brush technique there because there was very, very little water and paint on my brush. So in between these levels, there's multiple levels. Uh, what I would love to see you do is to just play, make, make a whole sheet of flat washes and a whole sheet of juicy washes, a whole, whole sheet of drippy washes. See, what do you like the best? Just take your time with it. Maybe use different colors and, and different colors are going to uh, react differently. And then see what feels the best to you, what is the most fun for you um, when you're doing each one. So pay attention to how you feel as you're doing this. And then once everything's dry, take a look at them and see what you like the best. There are many artists who are just totally into doing flat. They're more um, illustrative and graphic um, artists. And so the flat wash that they can control is much better for them. Um, and just check it out, see what you like the best. And then once everything is dry, take a look at it again and see which do you like better, which look do you like the best. For me, mine is between juicy and drippy. I like a lot of movement going on. I'm going to put this to the side very carefully because it's still very wet. And we're just going to do a simple leaf shape. So again, with the flat, we're going to rinse our brush out. We're going to drip, wipe it on the edge of the water jar. We're going to come into our color, load up our brush really well. And then we're going to wipe it off on a paper towel to get a good amount of it out. And then we can just make some leaves. Get some more color. Maybe grab some of this phthalo turquoise to mix up the color a bit. Make sure to wipe our brush on the paper towel to lift up some of that color. Okay, some of that phthalo turquoise. And then, see, you don't have to rinse your brush every time. Sometimes, when you have one color on your brush, and then when you uh, dip it into another color on the palette, um, you can get a really pretty um, differences in the color variation. So I'm, I'm still going to wipe it off on the paper towel because I'm looking for a flat look. Okay. All right, now let's go for Juicy. Get some more color in here. Okay. I'm going to wipe it off on the edge of my palette just once. And you can see there's a lot more water in there. It's very flowy. And I'm going to go ahead and I know I have that color on my brush. I'm okay with mixing it up in there. I'm gonna wipe it off here. Okay. 
Okay, maybe leave a little line in there for highlight. And then, um, so yeah, go ahead and create a whole, at least a whole column of each. I suggest doing a whole page and just really having fun with it. I'm going to show you um, something really cool you can do when it's in the juicy or the drippy realm. Um, you can add more color. It's nice and wet, so it'll take the color. And so let's see, I want to add some, some Prussian blue. I'm going to get my brush all juicy. Again, we're going with the juicy hair. And I'm just going to drip some color in there. And that's going to blend out really beautifully. Now I have this Prussian blue on my brush. And I'm going to dip straight into the um, hooker's green. Just wipe it off one time on my palette. And let's see how this combines right on the paper. You can see the hooker's green and the um, Prussian blue in there. So that's going to dry really, really pretty. All right, now drippy. <laughs> So it's nice and drippy here. I'm gonna get it on my load up my brush, uh, dip it into the water again, and you can see that's very, very juicy, very drippy. Let's add some more, dip it into the water. A lot of water here. Let's add some. Phthalo turquoise. I'll load up the brush really good. Dip it in. You can see it. If I just leave it like this, it is going to drip. So see how drippy that is? I don't know if you can see that bead of water. But if I just put it down, it's a lot of water. Sometimes you can get it drippy enough where you don't even have to dip it into the water here. Let's add some, add some yellow. Mm, still add some blue in there. Well, that made it kind of green. I'm going to load up my brush, get, dip it in my water jar, just the tip. Make it a little more juicy, and let's just add that into this leaf. And then I've got the yellow on my brush already. Let's just dip it right into that phthalo turquoise. Get some more water and then let's see. Now when it's nice and drippy and juicy like this, you have so much opportunity to to add some really beautiful um, color blends and I'm going to use some Windsor blue and drop that right in there. So there we have it. I will show you what these look like when they're dry. When doing flat washes, it's okay to use a dryer to um, dry what you're painting more quickly. I do recommend when you're doing a juicy or a drippy wash that you let it dry on its own because if you if I blasted some heat on this now for one it's gonna stop all the magic that is happening right now and one of the wonderful beautiful magical things about watercolor is the things it does all on its own okay so let's let these dry on their own and see what happens and I will show you what it looks like as soon as it's dry all right, just wanted to come back and show you these now that they've dried. This one's almost completely dry here, but you can see the difference between the flat wash here and then the juicy wash. You get these beautiful, beautiful backgrounds and blooms, and the juicy wash, you're getting it even more so. Um, here, there's a lot more movement, as you can see in this one. You got the blooms here and these beautiful um, see the watercolor just kind of spreading out. So this is a difference in 
how much water to use in watercolor. And then you'll see it even more when I show you the leaves when you add in different colors. So here are the leaves. And again, these are the, the flat ones. They're pretty even uh, coverage of color. And then the juicy ones, you see I did add some more color in this one here with the, um, with the blue. And you do see some movement in these. This is a little bit of blooming going on. Um, and then you really see it. This one's still slightly wet there. But you really, really see it, the difference in the drippy. You see there's a lot more blooming going on. The color um, combined, uh, or the color blended really beautifully. And I'm just loving, loving, loving these beautiful blooms happening here. And the color transition is very seamless. This is where you find out more of what your style is. Are you really more attracted to this beautiful translucent flat wash? Do you like this more juicy kind of wash where it's got some movement and the colors are blending nicely? Um, or do you prefer this really drippy, super wet wash where it's blooming a lot? Uh, the color blends um, show up even more. Um, so take a look at these and see which do you prefer. And then whatever your answer is to those questions, what do I prefer? How did I feel when I painted in these three different ways, these three levels of wetness and watercolor? Now, how do I feel looking at them dry? Which am I more drawn to? Those are indicators of what your style is. And um, you can develop your style further by if you really love the drippy, go for it. Just practice drippy, drippy, drippy washes no matter what you're painting and see how it works out. Maybe combine it between the juicy and the drippy. It just depends on your project. It depends on, on, on you. Everybody's unique and we're all individual and let's just embrace that. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions below, please put them in the comments below and I will see you in the next lesson.